Hello, everyone, and welcome to season two, episode four of the Entrepreneurial Empire. And today's special guest is no other than Sabrina Morris. She is the lifestyle promoter, and that says a lot and is very deep within itself, right? So without further ado, hello and welcome, Miss Sabrina. Happy, happy day. Happy, happy day, everyone. I'm so glad you joined us. And thank you so much for having me today to share and love on your honor. Thank you, Queen. Thank you. Um, we're going to dive in. But first, I want you to tell just a little bit about yourself and what you do. And then we're going to start from the beginning. So I'm Sabrina, known as the Lifestyle Promoter, as our lovely host introduced my business was birthed through my personal pain. I am one of those individuals who believe in having a relationship with God, the creator of the universe. I have to be specific today. The one who sent Jesus. And I solved problems when I worked for corporate America. I solved any C-suite executive problems. Whatever kept them up at night, I went in, I solved their problem, and I went on to the next one. And the way that I solve the problem is, for those of you who are kingdom citizens, you understand this, we can download from God. When yes. everybody else didn't understand what to do, guess what? We should be getting excited because that's an opportunity to download from God. Given that, I was going, 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 going some more, doing some more, and I didn't do what I like to do the most which is take a vacation, travel the world, and photograph it. When you report into C-suite executives, many of you understand what I'm telling you, when you want to take a vacation, all of a sudden, you're not dedicated. Right, guys and ladies? So I allow that crazy, how do I say, culture to mm. impact my own decision to not do what I enjoy doing, which is traveling the world, taking a break, resetting, and then going back again. So I was going, 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 and I'm gonna be transparent with each and every one of you. Sabrina didn't even have a hobby. That is not good. <laughs> going, 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 so much so that my doctor was begging me to quit my job. I go and see her. She says, Sabrina, when are you going to quit that job? I go and see her again. She says, Sabrina, when are you going to quit that job? Now, my mother was on the earth at that time, and she would remind me. She said, baby, you don't have to stay there. Mm. So I had options. And it's a lot when you have, if you're in a better situation when you have options. But yes. I'm, I can be, and many of us can, be loyal to a fault. You know who you are. You know who I'm talking to. So I was driving one day in Seattle, crying out to God, the creator of the universe, in tears. I mean, you know, everyone, when you're at that moment where you don't care how you look, it's the ugly cry. That was going on in the car, okay? And yes, I could still drive while I was doing that. That's a whole nother conversation. <laughs> So God gave me about three days. I was long, I was I had volunteered at the church, and one of the ladies said, "Sabrina, I have a concept I want to show you." Now God has an He's very strategic. He has a sense of humor as well, and He showed me this amazing opportunity where I can travel the world, photograph the world, and get paid doing so, and take care of the whole burnout factor. So for those of you who may resonate with this story where your children are telling you, Mom, we didn't get to go. Dad, we didn't get to go. Are you going to come here? When is the next time we're going to do this together? And you can't go because you are not real. Mm. You're and yes, we all have to, we all have responsibility. I understand yes. you're going to be saying, Sabrina, I got bills to pay. I got things to do. <laughs> But don't allow that to be your excuse. Mm. Find the time. Because I've been there. Find the time. I say that because many of us have loved ones 
that have transitioned to be with the Lord, those who are, are believers. And we're recording this right in between Christmas and New Year, New, New Year. Mm -hmm. This will be a tough time for many of you. Yes. And the thing that makes it easiest, which my mother, I would ask my mother, mother, we're such good friends. How how did you do it when your mother transitioned? How mm -hmm. I was picking her brain for her wisdom to help me deal with the fact that I knew my mother wouldn't always be on this earth as well. And she would always say, baby, you have your memory. You always have those memories. So if I'm going to pose a problem for those of you who are in the race and you're letting that, that excuse come up, what are you, what memories are you building with your loved ones if you're always working? Mm. What memories will they have to fall back on that are great memories? Not, oh, dad was always too busy for me. My mother was always too busy. Yeah. And I know it's hard because I don't know how my mother did it. I mean, she, single mother, parent, raised children, the two she had, plus she had a whole other slew of extra children who called her mother, and she found time for us on top of it. Mm -hmm. you, you can do it. I know it may be tough, but you can do but it. But you can do it. Yes. Yes. And that's what it's me through this time of the year is those memories that I share with my mother. Yeah, you have to find that work-life balance in order for it to work. <laughs> yes, and that work in itself doing that. Yeah, yes. So you said that you was working in the corporate America. You was um, You started out as a computer engineer as well as an enterprise architect. Yes. So you have been on both sides as being in the corporate world and being an entrepreneur. Yeah. And I've never heard, you've heard how most people have quit their jobs or got fired or laid off and then started their entrepreneurial, you know, journey. But you said your doctor told you to quit. Was it that stressful? What was it doing to your body? Well, it was doing a lot of things. And now that I am on the other side of corporate America, I'm doing a couple of videos and training on the signs. So mm. for example, there's one, okay. I had to have surgery. Um, there's no real, even the medical world does not know what causes it. However, I always say, okay, God, if I'm going through something tough, I need to have a victory on the other side of it. Let's make it better for everybody else yes. that, that may have the similar symptoms or dealing with some of these same issues. That was part of it. Another, There are other signs where sometimes you just don't have the energy to do what you need to do because you're, you're, you're just, you're overworked. There's no, you, you need a reset. And your body's saying, mm -mm. now mm -hmm. I, with my personality type, I will go anyway because that's just how I am. But that was making it worse. So th mm -hmm. there are those signs. And then you have family members who are talking to you. Listen to them. The clues are there. You have children begging you uh, to spend more time or you're missing their plays or their sporting events or their... yes. Have the conversation with your family. Have that conversation to say, okay, how can I how can I be a better parent in this area? How can I and bring them into the solution? If that makes mm -hmm. sense. Yes, it does. It really, really does. You have to be present sometimes in the moment and put away the phone and put away the the noise that's in your head and everything else. Um, even if it's just once or twice a day, pick a day to do something. Um, if you have more than one child, you know, as a group, but even if you can just take the time because some kids feel like you're not paying them enough attention or you're giving more to the other. So, yes, it does make a lot of sense. And to add on top of that, stress is a killer. 
stress is a killer. It really is. It activates something else inside your body and it just goes from there. So yes, I truly understand um, that. Um, so now I must ask, well, no, I guess I don't have to ask because I guess being an entrepreneur is bringing more benefits, more love, more health, more prosperity uh, than the corporate world <laughs> did for you. Um, so let's talk about um, your mother. You said that she was the voice of wisdom. I love that. How did she, um, it sounds like you guys not only had a beautiful and close relationship um, and that she gave all of y'all a gift of something different. Um, so what was some of her wisdom that you brought with you? Well, we, we mean all of her extra children and myself <laughs> and my brother. So she had two children and then there was a lot of other children, but it, if you said to them, that's not their mom, I would stand away because something may happen. <laughs> They're <laughs> not going to like that. They loved her that much, right? Oh, they wow. really saw her as mom. And we would tease her when she was on the earth. We'd tease her. We'd say, mother, we're going to always hear your voice, even when you're gone. She would start off with all of us like this. She said, I have a responsibility to be your parent. Number two, we all know I'm in your business. Okay, now that that's <laughs> out of the way, and, and she would go there. And we all would laugh about that because we wouldn't dare say, well, get out of my business and blah, blah. No, if you wanted to keep your teeth intact. <laughs> <laughs> okay. <laughs> <laughs> she was not the one. <laughs> you did not need to go there with her. No bell. And she had, when she transitioned, all of her pallbearers were her sons. And she had sons that stood, I mean, she was short like I am, you know, five, five. And she had sons that stood six, six feet tall, played basketball, football. And when mother said, all of them were like, yes, ma'am. No, ma'am. Mm -hmm. You better not say anything else. We better listen. We don't want to hear it. And we would say that. We may not want to hear it right now, but we would take it and file it away. Because mm -hmm. no matter what we go through in the future, we're going to need that. Yes. And we would talk about that at her when we were um, getting ready to get in the car to go to a funeral. One of my brothers was actually saying, you know, I was in doing something I shouldn't be, and I had a dream. And mother came to me in my dream and said, baby, why are you doing that? You shouldn't be doing that. He said, he stood straight up in the bed and said, and we all started laughing. He said, well, what did you do? He said, what did you think you did? I stopped. He said, what did you think? The mother would not like that, and he thought it was wrong to begin with, right? And so we would all start laughing just like you are now. <laughs> and I do these things like have us, even though I left corporate America, she had planted seeds to mm. work outside of the school system. So when we went to school as students, those of you who are students, my mother said, you know, being a woman of color in America, you have to go to college. You don't have a choice. Yes. Because when you show up, and this is Sabrina talking now, based on my background. So you guys kind of know my background. When I showed up, a lot of times I was the only female in the room and the only person of color. Mm. And then when I show up, all of the white males, they couldn't do the job. So I'm coming. Now, I know I can do the job. That's why I got there. Okay. So there were certain things that I had to prepare my mind to overcome when I show up. Mm -hmm. so my mother in the book I talk about one of the most tragic experiences that I had as a teenager and how my mother helped me overcome that because mm -hmm. that experience could shut down a lot of, and I'm talking people of color yes a lot of scenarios whereby what do you do do you throw your hands up and give up no that is not no. you know you want to because there's a lot of challenges out there, you have to keep going. Mother would say, if you give up, you already lost at that point. Mm. 
<laughs> it's not over. I think what Les Brown is saying that it's not over until you win, until you achieve what you want to achieve. Yes. So she would, so each time we would face something challenging, even though she's gone, we could, and we joke about it, but we sure can. We could hear her voice in the situation. We can hear her voice when we're not doing our best that she knows mm. we can do. I told each, shared with you earlier, each of you that are listening, that I cried out to God for a solution. He gave me the solution, but because I was loyal to a fault and I was still in the whole corporate arena and not focused on the business opportunity God gave me, my mother would say, baby, either you're going to do this business or you're not. And this is mm. coming from an amazing entrepreneur. She would say, you're either going to crap or get off the pot. She didn't mix <laughs> all the <words. laughs> She made it plain. If you're real slow, she made it simple for you, you know? And I kept hearing that. When she transitioned, I kept hearing that. And I said, Sabrina, it's time for you to go all in. It's time mm. for you to use her wisdom. Because she saw the business. If it was flawed, she would have said, mm, about that you know she would she would have had a different perspective i know it's a gift because some of you are saying well Sabrina, i don't have a parent like that or i don't have i don't have that person in my life i would tell you open your heart to it because there is somebody there that's been encouraging you now i gotta say consider the source right there's some yes. people you do not want their input. Let me say that again. <laughs> some people you do not want their input. If they're always down and they're not, although my mother did say, and I can hear her now saying, but baby, you can learn from anybody, even if it's what not to do. Mm. Don't take that advice from that person that's showing you through their lifestyle of what not to do, other than don't do what they're doing to get that lifestyle. That makes sense. Yes, yes, yes. It's important to believe in yourself, trust in God and the mm -hmm. path that he puts you on. And mm -hmm. like you said, having a good tribe is important, but at the same time, knowing who to have in your circle. Mm -hmm. Yes, yes. Um, I love, love, love the color blue, but I also love dogs. I see the shirt that you have on. Are you, and I know that you're a photographer, but also, are you also into um, t-shirts or making them or you just put them on? Well, the I was going to, on social media, many of you who follow us, you know that we, you've been seeing posts that says something big is coming soon, something big is coming soon. And I hope yes. it's pulling it out of me. <laughs> <laughs> so, so so I had a, uh, an idea to leverage some of the experiences and I'm working with a manufacturer to create a clothing line. So this is one of the pieces. This is part of the athletic gear. There's going Ooh. to be athletic gear. There's going to be the spoken collection, which is pretty much accessories that will speak for themselves. You just have to put it on and walk in the room just yes for those yes. of you who like that that quality i found a, a, a manufacturer that's a french manufacturer i won't mention their name right now but it's coming i'm in the process of getting the infrastructure together if you will to make sure everything is in play place before we release so i ordered a couple of samples and they're at the athletic gear just turned out better than I expected. They even have mm. some pieces that are made out of recycled bottle material. Wow. Yes. Okay. And I like to, because I, I'm also a instructor, I dance ballroom and salsa. Blah, 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 blah. So when we, those dancers out there know what I'm talking about. Now I'm talking <laughs> about those who may have gotten a little fluffy and we haven't been dancing recently. The, the, line that's made out of the recycled bottle is really great because it'll hold our body in place while mm -hmm. we're dancing so that we can get our when we get our shapes back we can then say okay <laughs> you know? 
okay. <laughs> now, I like that. Yes, yes. And you're also a photographer as well. Yes. Now, is that a passion or is that something that you find that could also bring in revenue? That's a good point. That's a really, really good point. Because most entrepreneurs know everybody has, oh, good, I left my phone in the other room. But everybody has a uh, camera on the back of the phone. And how do you compete with that, right? So if you enjoy taking shots of people, there's different types of photographers. I do not like people in my shot. If you're on social media and you see a person in my shot, that was a repurposed shot or a shot I did not take. <laughs> oh, okay. Yes. I, but there are photographers out there who enjoy taking pictures of people. However, mm -hmm. the shot that you see on the cover of the book, I had to do because I took that shot in 2020. And being... I like my pictures a certain way, so I couldn't get past. That's the only exception to the rule. I wanted you to look a certain way. And to do that, you can do that with photography. And thank God, he helped me nail that one. So I say that to say, all of us photographers know, you know, how do you compete? What, what we did is we repurposed a lot of my shots. So all of the mm. shots that you see on social media, they are my shots and less there's a person in there, or there's a person in there I didn't realize there was a person when I was taking the shot, and now you see it on social media. So, and then in the near future, we're coming up with a possible way where you can acquire some of those shots that you like from mm -hmm. from me as well. Had a couple of real paid photographers look at my work and say, Sabrina why aren't you i said i know but we have to be strategic because so many people have a phone now and they're all mm. taking so how do you compete with that and that's where that entrepreneurial side comes into play just looking at the picture on your shirt you can tell that that was taken you know just it looks so professional. I was like, oh, where did you get that from? But I was like, wait a minute, let me ask first. And that's when you told me about the shirt and God's uh, guidance. And I was like, yes, that is just beautiful. Now, I just have to ask, is that your dog or is that just a photo of? Oh, that's a good question. <laughs> well, I'm, a, I'm a speed junkie. Okay, guys, not the drugs, not the drugs. But fast cars, airplanes, and mushing. So Ooh. mushing is these are this was a, a shot of the other team. God told me to take this picture at the time. I didn't know what I was gonna do with it. I was like, okay, God, they're just they're napping. We just ran these dogs 10 miles and they're napping. So <laughs> I had an opportunity to go mushing with the Iditarod dog. Now, either on our team, we have dogs who have run the race and won, or they're training to run the next race. Mm. This is not a picture of the dogs on my team. If you go to our Instagram page, you will see a video of the of our team of the doggies. Now, I've always wanted to do this. I got to take the dogs out. They teach you how to stay on the path. You don't know how deep the snow is. Mm. just don't know so you don't want to go off the the training trail they teach you how to keep the sleigh on the trail and you go fast so that was a lot of fun this shot was taken after i had taken our team out for nine miles because the instructor had to take it out for the first part then i got the switch lead and it was fun because I got to bond with the little doggy on the way out on my team. And then when it was my time to sit, sit in the sleigh, my voice is very unique, as you can tell. Thank God it wasn't an avalanche season at that time because that's the first thing okay. the instructor said. He looked right at my voice and said, you don't have avalanches right now. <laughs> I can literally set off an avalanche. I've almost done that before in some of the back home. My voice because I get excited, I start laughing, and then yeah, I get things. So, 
in the sleigh with the little doggy, and now they have a bond with my team. You have a primary doggy and a secondary, and then you have a team. And one of our dogs in our team started barking the command. Mm. Now it's weird. Give these commands, and then this little dog I noticed will bark the command. So I had bonded with the, the first two, and we did our team did such a good job that all the other teams asked us to lead them back 10 miles. Oh wow. I was off leading, and I started talking to the lead. And I'm having a fun time talking to the dogs, and then all of a sudden I hear the second dog bark the command. So my little doggy started going faster, and I started <laughs> laughing. And then as I started laughing, they, the little doggy barked the command again, and they started going even faster. I mean, our team took off. The instructor mm. was shocked. He said, I've never seen this happen before. So God, when I travel the world, I go with God and my angel all the time. And these type of experiences I always have because God gives me either favor with the animals or he gives me favor with so that I can really, really enjoy myself after spending so much time in the grind in corporate America. I'm making up for lost time. <laughs> so on, this particular shot was from that experience whereby I went on the backside of a mountain, literally in the Tetons, to go machine. Okay. I love that. I love that. So now we are finna get into what you do not only are you a book author you're a serial entrepreneur but we're going to talk about the traveling and the places that you've been um and how long have you been into this business as an entrepreneur well the, the i'm gonna be honest with everybody i'm not gonna perpetrate a fraud Although I had access to the business, I haven't gone all in except for well, it's starting in 2019. Started really going all in, focusing on exploring the world. I decided to sell my house in Seattle and become a nomad and kick off that nomadic lifestyle in 2020. Now you all know what happened in 2020. <laughs> yes. That's a whole nother story for another time. However, <laughs> Right before then, as an enterprise architect, I'd have a lot of time talking to C-suite executives about one thing that's more important in their, in their business than anything else they do, and that's their employees. Mm -hmm. Taking care of their employees is so important. Many of you know, sometimes you, you work hard, you have vacation, and you can't take it, which is not fair. So I have been working on the executives as an enterprise architect to tell them, hey guys, you need to take better care of your employees. Hey guys, you need to take better care of your employees. Hey guys. Now I can have a conversation with them to help them come up with ways to make sure their employees don't end up in that whole burnout scenario where they can reboot, re-energize, and reset. And they will be surprised at how much better performance they will get out of their employees when their employees know that you actually care about them. One mm -hmm. thing I like about European companies is, and their culture it's people and everybody that work, they work to live and enjoy life. Here in America, a lot of times people live to work. And I want to change that. Yes. Yes. <clears throat> or oh, keep putting it off, saying I do it next year. Next year gets here and it's the same thing. It's like that cycle never ends. And you're wondering why your life and you feel so stressed out and so burnt out. And you're like, oh, I need a vacation, but you won't take one you right. won't find that time to just you know experience something new if it's just going into another city over or another state you know you have to do something because it's not all about work yes work is yes. not going to make you happy it yes. helps pay the bills but it's not going to make you happy i i also say for those of you 
who may be saying, Sabrina, I can't take a vacation because I just started a new position and I don't have any vacation accrued. I say do a, a staycation. Find something in your area where you live that you can enjoy. For example, many of us live in a city or a state where so many other people will actually get on a plane and fly to or drive to because there's so much to do even in your own backyard. Mm -hmm. On Saturday, you can, you know, get up, plan you an adventure. Now, our amazing hostess showed a link to the website. If you click the link that that says join our Unpack Your Bucket List, we cover this in that session. The only thing you need to do is have a journal with places that you want to explore. I don't care how crazy you may think it is or how far you may think it is. We just talked about mushing. Many of you don't even, didn't even know what that was. Mushing mugs. <laughs> right before we started talking about it. So it could be, you could put a question mark and say, oh, I like these things, Sabrina, what should I do? And in that session, it's complimentary, we show you how easy it is to book it and go anywhere in the world based on what you want to accomplish. Are you a foodie? Do you enjoy food? Okay, well, why not go on a food tour in your own backyard? Do you like you know, wine? Why not experience some of the wines in your own backyard? Or even better, go to Italy and experience them there. Or go to mm -hmm. so and I show you how easy it is to book it and go at a discount. Okay. Two things happen when individuals see how easy it is, how you can see how easy it is. And I hope you don't choose the first thing that many people do and some people curse. Because <laughs> they're like, I just spent all that money going to, and I'm going to stay in the same place for, you know, I don't want to know. I don't want to Cursing. And then the second thing that I see happen, people will literally break down in tears. Because mm. now their travel dreams and the things they have listed in their bucket list or in their journal can be a reality. And they can see themselves actually experiencing the places they want to go. Now, I think our amazing host hit on something very important. All of us need to experience different cultures, different places, different streets. Why go down the same street your whole life? <laughs> I know I'm slapping that because I'm like, I'm calming myself down because I have cousins who've only been in the same place their whole life and they know that I'm going to show up one day and kidnap them literally and put them in the car and we're going to drive, even if it's to the next town over, even if we got to stop every 20 minutes, which that's definitely a love act for someone who likes tea, because we like to get in the car, <laughs> drive, and get there, and, you know, and experience them. I say that to say, you don't know what you're missing. You don't know what you don't know if you don't go. Mm -hmm. You just don't know. You don't know what it's like when you go to another country as a person of color and they see you as an individual and then your skin tone later. If they don't like you yes. nine times out of ten, they just don't like you. It's not like America where you show up and you got to remind them, hey, yeah, I had to do this a lot as an enterprise architect because I had the business side and the IT side. I had to say, mm, this is a two-way interview, buddy. Mm. I, if I don't show up, you're in a situation because you have a problem that you're not just solved. Right? So, in, but in Europe, I never had that. It was like, Sabrina, you should come here and help us. Sabrina! It's, <laughs> it's nice and refreshing to know that there are certain places you can go on this earth where they see you as an individual mm -hmm. before they see and deduce anything about you because. You may have melanin or beautiful skin tone like we do. Okay. <laughs> yes. <laughs> yes. <laughs> so, you also have a podcast as well. 
Well, I have been asked, and that may be something you're seeing. I have been asked to do my own podcast. Now, I have a lot on my plate, and I said, nope, not yet. Not time. I had several people asking me, Sabrina, you should be doing your own podcast. I've had people reach out to me who can help facilitate putting that together. However, at this time, I'm enjoying going on as many other podcast hosts' podcasts and giving to their audience. Perfect, perfect. I love this right here. I was like, ooh, it's so detailed. It has a video attached on it. I was like, yes. Whoever did this was just phenomenal. Kudos, kudos. Thank um, you. I actually did it. Thank you. <laughs> okay, now. <laughs> I, like, I like using, and this is, several of you may be, driving listening to this podcast or doing doing what i call chores and listening to this podcast and you may be saying man i always wanted to do, be an entrepreneur or have a side hustle or explore something else to do i'm glad our amazing host brought this up because you can leverage your gifts and see if there's mm -hmm. an opportunity back there now i have an it background so i've I have evaluated lots of software. I've brought teams in to develop software for companies. And there's a lot that we've done. So I said, hmm, self, I needed a particular promotional video for the book. So I put my IT hat back on. I started evaluating what types of tools I can leverage to do this type of video and other things. So I'm telling each and every one of you, use what you have. Explore with you what you have as a starting point. For example, if you're a makeup artist and you're tired of grind, hmm, there are companies out there whereby you could leverage and sign up as a direct mark with a direct marketing company that focuses on skincare, focuses on glamour, and you can set up and start working your own entrepreneurial path that way. Or let's say you are a consultant or niche consultant as I was, why not look at starting your own consulting company? There's a lot of power in journaling. Or you could you you may have always enjoyed taking pictures as well. So you can say, hmm, how can I leverage my photography? Do I, you know, there's so many options. You, you just start brainstorming. What do you have? Or what has, what has been deposited on the inside of you that you always wanted to do that you haven't done? Maybe there's an opportunity there. And I wouldn't advise anybody just go out tomorrow and quit the job. You have to, you have to get ready to transition. And that's yes. a whole nother conversation in itself on how do you get ready to transition. I would say start here in your mind first. Be the best you that you can be while you're dealing with the cray cray of corporate. Or some of you may have an amazing corporate position and enjoy it. And yes, I, I celebrate you. Great job. Way to go. Just make sure you don't get too sued one way or the other. And spend more time with your family and friends and me time too, time for yourself as well. Yes, I love that. I love that. I tell my, my children all the time, please don't quit a job until you have something else in your pocket. Don't do that. But mm -hmm. don't stay somewhere where you feel stuck, burnt out, not appreciated either. You know, right. follow your heart and your dreams. Right. And I did that way too much. I stayed in positions where I was highly unappreciated. And that is mm. that is not good. Not good at all. And another piece of advice my mother would always say is you need six months to a year provision. In other words, if you if some because these companies will let you go like this. Yes. Then, and when that happens, you need to make sure, like my mother would say, you need six months to a year a house note, you know, or food, exp expenses, period. Period. For a whole year. 
you don't know what's going to happen. You don't want to live from two to always be that. Don't live from paycheck to paycheck. Don't live from paycheck to paycheck. If you're doing that, that's where that whole side hustle idea will come in because now you can start generating another revenue stream to put aside, like Mother would say, don't spend it. You need that six months to 12 months provision. Yes. And it's hard for single parents. It's hard for two parents in the household. This day and age is not like it was in the 70s and 80s where you can only have one, you know, a husband in the house working and a mom stay at home and take care of the kids. Now you need everybody to help and to be a part and to, you know, um, be a helping hand. Yes, my mother, I remember my mother would work two jobs sometimes, but she was also an entrepreneur. So she was in real estate and she had paid cash for properties. And that was her second stream of income is real estate coming in, money coming in. So yes, yeah, she was working those two and three jobs, but she was smart because she was very strategic in how she did budgets. She did all of us extra children <laughs> budgets, whether we wanted it or not. I want to see a budget. And that just, if you hate the word budget, change the word. <laughs> you know, just track where your money is going because then there'll be a time where you can you can budget in you know spending time and doing extra things and my mother even though she was a single parent we took a vacation every year every year and that was a mistake mm -hmm. we took a vacation every year she was and sometimes twice a year okay mm -hmm. yeah so she that, knew a that. lot of out of the way <laughs> Especially for entrepreneurs, having that those different tunnels and, and revenues coming in is important. And like ourselves, we have more than just one business to help us sustain. Um, and maybe next time I have you come on and we could talk about the Owl app and some other things, you know, how do people can make money and, you know, save up as save up and spend because it's, it's like you get a paycheck. You know you have to pay your bills spend a little bit on yourself put some in the savings as well as you know give you know if it's not in church give to the homeless give to the needy buy someone a present just also give back because everything comes back tenfold when you do it you know but um yeah a good heart and responsibility and being, yes 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 and being that I'm an entrepreneur, uh, a nomad right now, I go from state to state from time to time. And I also host the cash flow game. Okay? Mm. Many of you say, well, what's the cash flow game? And many of you have heard of Rick, Robert Kiyosaki and you know what it is. For those of you who know what it is, just tune out for one, one quick second. Right now, I'm in Colorado. So if you want to join us, or a cash flow game. Cash flow game is nothing but an amazing uh, simulation. I used to write simulations for companies as well. It's a great simulation. And you're going to focus on looking at your balance sheet. You're going to have a job just like you do now. It's a simulation. So anything that you want to do, if you want to get a second side hustle, you can do that in the simulation. You're going to focus on your balance sheet. Okay, many of us that went to school, we took class, county, and we had a balance sheet that we focused on for another business. Concept, you can do that for yourself. <laughs> they didn't talk about that in school, did they? No. No. So what we do is we look at that balance sheet for the whole game and and go through the board and, and just, you know, look at what you want to do in your life and you can actually simulate the concept. That's why I tell all my players. You can simulate the concept that you want to do in real life. Thinking about getting a second home? Okay. Do it in the game. See what happens to your balance sheet. If you're thinking about getting multiple streams of income, okay. Do it in the game. See what happens to your balance sheet. You want to buy stocks? Again, you want to get some CDs? Do it in the game. See what happens to your balance sheet. So you can test it out before you implement. And that's another strategy. Mm -hmm. to I say quit your job quietly or transition or to do something else or maybe you want to cut back 
on the amount of time you spend in corporate. You don't work 20 hours a week instead of 40. So there's options. Yes, I love that. I love that. Okay, Miss Sabrina, it was such a pleasure speaking with you. Oh, I had such, I gained some knowledge and some wisdom <laughs> and some advice. So you guys listen. Um, tell the viewers and audience how they can reach you. You can reach me at support at the lifestylepromoter.com on email. You can reach me on LinkedIn. You can search for The Lifestyle Promoter. Connect with me on LinkedIn. Let us know. You listen to the podcast. And if you have any questions that you want us to cover, please respond below with your questions, your insights. If you disagree, why? Respond below. And when I come back, we can address some of those if it's okay with the host. Definitely yes. do that as well. And yeah, the lifestyle promoter. You can even Google. I know this. You can Google the lifestyle promoter. I'll come up on TikTok, some of the other places as well. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you, everyone. This has been another incredible, informative, and empowering episode. And I hope that you um, not only we can take away some notes, um, but some clarity on how to that work life balance as well as maintain some happiness in your life. Um, physically, mentally, and spiritually. So thank you all again for watching. As she said, please leave your comments, your concerns, your questions. We would love to get back to you. Um, and if you would like to be on the show, you can always reach us at Entrepreneurial Empire. Thank you again and have a blessed and wonderful day.